Let's talk about some best practices when we try to measure behavior using questionnaire items. First of all, we have to keep in mind that res respondent recollection is fraught with problems, errors in people's memory of encoding and retrieval, among others. So first of all, when we're asking people to recall their behaviors, we should definitely include an I don't know or I don't recall option. This is often the correct answer. We also know that measuring mere occurrence rather than exactly how many times someone did something is much easier to recall. Or if we want to measure how many times someone does something, it's generally better practice to offer coarse bins of ranges rather than precise values. Lastly, some people recommend the use of subjective usage scale questions when measuring behavior so that people are able to recall and report them. I would like to show you why that's a problem. Consider the two following survey questions. On the left hand side, we see how frequently would you say you practice meditation? And this is what we call a subjective usage or subjective frequency scale from never to always. And on the right hand side, we're asking in the last week about how many times have you engaged in meditation, measuring from zero times to eight or more times. At first glance, these seem like we're asking the exact same question, but we're really not. One is subjective usage and the other is objective usage. When we ask people to report their subjective usage, in other words, they have to make sense of words like sometimes or very often, what gets muddied up in that answer is their self-perception and their image. People who imagine themselves as environmentalists, for example, will be more inclined to say they often or very often engage in a pro-environmental behavior. However, in actuality, when we measure the real behavior, they may be less inclined to say that they do those behaviors when they have to actually measure them and count them out. Important to keep in mind, subjective usage questions are wonderful. We just have to be very clear what we're actually measuring when we use them. Given that we know that it's hard for people to recall how often they engage in particular behaviors, there are a few things we can do to improve their, their recollection ability. First of all, when we ask them how often they do something, it's important to match it up with the typical pattern or ritual. For example, for most people, the idea of going to the gym or working out is patterned within the week. Most people don't describe how often they go to the gym in yearly terms. I go 13 times a year. So we should ask in that same ritual or pattern. Similarly, for the dentist, the pattern and ritual of going to the dentist is patterned across a calendar year. So we should ask the question of how often people go to the dentist based on that same unit of time. It's important to also keep in mind that we just have to accept that some of the things that we wish consumers taking surveys would be able to tell us about are simply not something that are important enough to them to recall. For example, consider the following two questions. Who was your first boyfriend or girlfriend? Versus when was your first visit to Jack in the Box? Which of these two questions are likely more salient for most people in their lives? Of course, in my case, it's Jack in the Box. But I think most other individuals will tend towards pointing to the first choice. We have to accept that not all things are equally important in one's life. And how often people buy a can of tuna fish or how often individuals purchase a particular type of pepper is something that may not be as important as major life events. This relates to one of the more common sins that we see occur in marketing questionnaires. I suspect that you have probably seen this question on a marketing questionnaire at some point. How did you first hear about us? And insert the name of the company or brand. And then there's a lengthy list, social media, newspaper, magazine, from a friend, and so on. In many cases, the option of, I don't know how I first heard about you is not even presented. And that's a problem. In many cases, people simply cannot recall the absolute reason they first heard about a brand or company. So we should include an I don't know option. When measuring behavior, where should you set your or more cutoff points for behavioral questions? Consider the following two survey questions. In the past week, about how many times have you consumed a craft beer? The option on the left ranges from zero all the way to 11 or more. And scale option B ranges from zero to four or more. The only difference here is where we start doing the or more option. Which one is a better choice for us as marketing researchers? Well, notice how the pattern of results would look if we ask this question two different ways. Notice on the right-hand side, we have a high percentage of respondents who selected four or more. Whereas here, the 11 or more is much less, only 10%. The or more option is very difficult for us to make sense of as marketing researchers. When someone selects, say, four or more, we don't know if they meant four, six, or 32. For 11 or more, sure, we also don't know if someone selected 11, 
12 or 24, but fewer people actually selected that option. Therefore, it's much easier for us to observe the overall distribution of craft beer consumption. Whereas it's much more difficult for us to figure out what the true distribution of craft beer consumption is on the right hand side here, because we really don't know what the long tail of the four or more answer really means. Thus, we would prefer the left hand option. Next, consider another question related to measuring behavior. How wide should you set the ranges? The answer to this question deals with how we intend to use this type of data for craft beer marketers. In the world of craft beer marketing, there's a big difference between understanding a consumer who drinks zero craft beers and one who drinks merely one per week or one who drinks two to four. Therefore, we have intense need to have a measure of precision down here at this low end of usage. Therefore, the option on the left is far superior. In fact, that leads us to a good general rule of thumb when measuring frequency of behavior. In most situations, when we want to measure how often someone engages in a behavior, marketers are very interested in knowing who does something zero times, someone who does something just one time, and someone who does something two or more times with cutting off at different ranges for frequency of usage. Therefore, we generally want to have a distinct measure for no times, a distinct measure for one time, and then the other cutoff points are judged as appropriate for a particular marketing research context.